everyone. Welcome back to Special Interests with Bob and Donna, Bob Banfelder and Donna Durasmo. Uh, we hope that you are doing well. Uh, we haven't been around uh, lately with our uh, videos, but uh, we're back now with a very interesting one, uh, which is multifaceted, I have to say. And uh, we hope you all are doing well during these trying times. Uh, for those of you who don't know who we are, uh, my name is Donna and I'm a retired educator with the New York City Board of Education. I retired after 32 years of teaching wonderful children. And Bob is an award-winning crime thriller novelist. He has 14 books out, uh, four of which are handbooks on uh, hunting, gun hunting, bow hunting, um, how to uh, write well and get published, and fishing, fishing which we both like to do very much so absolutely but we have to find a and boat. you usually have fish me <laughs> yeah, i usually have my fish excuse you. is that i'm with the camera and taking oh, okay. copious notes okay and and controlling the boat and controlling which we are looking for right now right, right. we're looking to right. find one and because of the pandemic we none, recently, none are around we recently sold our yeah. boat and looking for another one okay well in addition to his novels and his handbooks, Bob has written over 300 uh, outdoors articles for regional as well as uh, national magazines, sports magazines, mm -hmm. magazines, and he is the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award for his fiction and nonfiction from Who's Who in America. So he's got a few accolades uh, under his under his belt. So that being said, uh, we have uh, a lot of information to share with you today, and um, we're going to tie in a uh, book that we're working on right now, which is a cookbook, and it may sound uh, very weird to you, but we do use knives when we're cooking, right? We do, but we're not going to put any real emphasis on the cooking end. This is... A show that is dealing specifically uh, with one particular... Uh, yes, and that is the... XOC. That's the CRKT Columbia River Knife and Tool Company. XOC. Pronounced, pronounced shock. I XOC? Don't know. I, I don't know that happens, but anyway, <laughs> it's the CRKT XOC pronounced shock. So I'm going to be behind the camera and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, when we think of folding knives, we generally think of um, a single blade knife or knives with or without pocket clips for EDC, everyday carry. Either that or multi-bladed tool knife set that is generally worn on the hip and carried in a sheath made of either uh, leather or nylon. And again, the focus will be on folding knives, but I just want to briefly look at uh, some of these uh, sheath knives here, multi-tool kit, if you will. Um, and you can see here that carried on a hip, we're talking about a sheath of generally about five, five and a half inches. Okay, this, the bigger one being the, the charade uh, tool. I'm not going to bother taking these out and going through. I just want to make it clear that we're, we'll be dealing with uh, three basic... Uh, we'll be looking briefly at two basic types and focusing in on the folding knife. Okay, so we've got a charade here. Charade, I'm not sure the pronunciation. Gerber. And um, most of us are familiar with the uh, Leatherman. So that, again, these are to be carried on a hip in sheets of either nylon or leather. And those are multi-tools. Multi-tools, yeah. right. Then we can go even smaller. We can go into a couple of knives that do not have clips on them, and they simply drop into the pocket for carry. And uh, mm, let's see, 
it's been a while since I even uh, I just pulled this out of a collection here. This is the limited edition uh, Faulkner made of stainless steel, stainless steel 420, uh, which has less carbon in it than a 440. And when you talk about these kind of knives, uh, because of that um, uh, carbon material, uh, a skin diver would generally carry a knife like this. Why? Because it's, they're very, very uh, corrosion resistant. So we'll put these guys away and we'll get into what we're dealing with here really are the folding knives. Okay, we'll start with, oh, and um, Don and I have done shows on these in the past. Uh, maybe you'll give a link. Um, notice the clip on a knife here, and, this, and these will be, the four that I'm going to be showing you will be our CRKT's uh, knives. Columbia River Knife and Tool, as Donna pointed out. So this is the Avant, and we'll go to a, a bigger size here. This is the home front. And this is the uh, APOC, APOC, short for Apocalypse. <laughs> and you can see it's a little bit bigger. And then we go into a big boy, but we're not done yet. This is the Seismic, and this was the biggest knife that I carried. The biggest knife that I carried up to this point, and we're going to look at something that will dwarf this seismic uh, folding knife here. So let me just get these out of the way, and we'll home in on the bad boy. On the topic of conversation. Yes. Okay. This is delivered. The knife that we're going to be dealing with in a second here. This is how it was shipped. And what is the name of this knife here, hon? Shock. XOC. OC. Okay. CRKT's XOC, pronounced shock. Okay. And this is the unveiling, if you will. Okay. <laughs> the unveiling, okay. So. Oh, hat. They give you a hat. And I'll put this over here. And let's unwrap this guy here. This is how it comes boxed. And of course, I'm not just taking this out of the box now. I've put this guy through its paces, as they say. And we're not there yet. So this comes in a leather uh, wrap case, if you will. Ta-da! Ta-da! Okay. Nice protection. Nice protection. And here is the knife. Folding knife with a pocket clip on the other side that we'll be examining in a moment. We'll be going into uh, depth on this knife. This is what this show is really all about. So here's our bad boy with the um, pocket clip. Okay. And note, let's do a comparison and note the difference in size. And Don, I'm going to leave this out here for a while so they can see this again. This is the biggest knife that I carried. And um, what, Donna? I'm going to move that Just, over a bit. Okay. Don't give me hand signals because I can't <laughs> follow. Just tell me what you want me to okay, do here. Okay, there you go. There you go. All right. Much bigger. Much now, we'll be looking at a um, lock system on this knife. We'll be getting into the, this particular knife uh, 
pretty deeply. But again, just look at the size. And some of you are going to say, oh, come on, Bob. You're going to carry this in your pocket? Well, I'm going to be explaining something in a moment here. And I, what I want you to listen to, what I want you to hear is the gospel according to Bob Banfelder. I'm going, in this uh, review here, I'm going to be making a couple of bold statements, two bold statements that you uh, might take issue with, but I want you to believe that uh, it's uh, a, a candid assessment. So keep in mind, there's going to be two. Okay, so I think we pretty much covered the comparison between the two knives here. And i just like to point out is that I like big knives. I like to carry a bigger knife for the things that we're into. Uh, me with the fishing, uh, with the hunting, and Donna with the uh, fishing, with the boating, as we mentioned, so on and so forth. We're outdoorsy people, camping, so on and so forth. Okay, so with this big pocket knife, this is as big as they come. You're not going to see a bigger knife at this point. Um, this is humongous. Is it overkill? Perhaps. But let's see what my intentions are with this knife. Kind of touched on that. As a test of strength, it all started with kitchen knife. Started with this knife in a kitchen on a particular, on fowl actually, meaning chickens and turkeys. And um, it was put through its paces with what we call spatchcocking. S-P-A-T-C-H C-O-C-K-I-N-G, spatchcocking, which is a fancy name, fancy term for Butterflying, like you would butterfly a shrimp, okay? Um, we've butterflied, or I've butterflied, the uh, birds, as mentioned, chickens and turkeys, and big turkeys, and regular size, medium size, maybe a little bit larger, six-pound chickens. There's a reason why I'm mentioning, mentioning this, I'll see in a moment. Um, when we think of kitchen cutlery, kitchen cutlery, kitchen, kitchen cutlery now, <laughs> we think of generally, oh, a few companies here. I don't have a Chicago. I do have the Chicago one. We think of Zwilling J.A. Hankels, okay? So here's my, uh, for the kitchen, my 8-inch chef's cooking knife. And uh, I have a comparable knife, same length blade, Chicago cutlery, which does make the cut. Again, it's uh, Swilling J.A. Hankels, and of course, Wolfstaff, W um, U mm, S T S T H O F with umlauts over the U. Many of you have heard the name, uh, perhaps in your kitchen, you own those quality knives. I don't have any of the wolf stuffs, but I do have Chicago cutlery and, uh, of course, the more expensive uh, Hankels, the uh, Swilling J.A. Hankels. Um, and now I'd like to introduce you to, more thoroughly, this bad boy here, and I'll put this aside for the time being. And I'm going to deploy this big guy with the flipper over here. And um, if you're familiar with the seismic, the magic to its deployment, back to the seismic, is what they call IKS, uh, IKS bearings in here, uh, ball bearings. Um, this has been in abeyance for a while, uh, we'll get into um, 
lubrication of knives and all that business. But for a knife this size, look how effortlessly I open this guy. It is a very, very uh, powerful knife. Closes nicely too. It closes nicely um, by depressing this pivot button here, just like on the seismic. So I can open this and I can push the button and deploy uh, and uh, close this knife too. Okay, so what I, I call this knife, this folding knife, a knife for all reasons and seasons. And I'll explain more on that in a moment. This is a prototype of the CRKT's XOC, model 5400. And Donna, you can maybe home in on this, okay? Over here we got the model number. Down in here is the model number, mm -hmm. okay? And if you could uh, home in on this symbol over here, okay? This is the uh, IKBS um, um, logo, if you will, um, for the uh, bearing system. All right? So, let's see where we're going here. So, the knife is awesome, and here's a statement that I'm going to uh, come out with that you're going, it might be a hard pill for you to swallow, and that is, amazingly, it carries quite comfortably in the pocket, more so than most other pocket knives, big or small. Now, you're going to say, come on, Bob, are you kidding me? All right, well, there's a reason for this. The XOC's overall profile, and I'll close this back up, picture this in the pocket now, which I'll show you in a moment. The XOC's overall profile is the key to understanding this anomaly. Wide and lying flat and solid at a juncture where the hip joins the leg, you know, more so on the leg, of course. So whether you're sitting or standing all day, it's as if this 11-ounce baby, 11 ounces, it's as if this 11-ounce tool is not even there. And I want you to believe that. It's remarkable. And that's one of the remarkable statements, fantastic statements, questionable statements that I'm going to make. But I want you to, wish you could feel it, but what I'm going to do is to put it in my pocket here. And here's my clip. And I'll bring this up so that you can see it, how it lies, how it rests. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, when I put something like this in my pocket, I know it's there because of its configuration, because, because of its profile. And this, again, is a, is a pretty big knife. Of course, something like I showed earlier, one of these non-clip foldables, okay? Of course, I really don't feel that in the pocket. Moving back to this one, I would. But I do not feel this. And I've been out with this all day, day and night with this knife. And it's going to be my, well, I've given another term beside a EDC, be, uh, besides an everyday carry. I call it something a little bit different, which we'll look at in a moment. So, let me take this bit put it out here. Put it down here. Now, I mentioned spatchcocking, and spatchcocking is the removal of the backbone of fowl, and there's a reason why we do that in cookery. Removing the backbone from chickens or removing the backbones from 
say a 20 pound turkey spatchcocking then pressing down after you take out that bone say with the chicken as you're going down the spine along either side you're taking out the backbone and down here the tail okay you take that out and then you would press down on the back of the bird with the palms of your hands and you crack the breast flattening the bird even further to open wide the cavity so that the chicken will cook faster and more evening uh, and more evenly and here's an example and this is like right on the money and we've done it twice with a 6.30 pound bird chicken example one hour actually it was one hour and three minutes one hour versus three and a half hours of cooking uh, the chicken the conventional way without spatchcocking that's quite a savings in time that's all there's a two hour savings roasting with the uh, two oven hour going. savings roasting now of course when you open up like the, you've got this ball of a bird if you will but once you open up its cavity flatten it you know take out the backbone flatten it you have to have a roasting pan that does what that accommodates the size of this uh, flattened uh, bird right now be a chicken can we do this turkey. with the goose that you hunt for you can absolutely you can do it with fowl you can do it as a matter of fact I don't really want to steal thunder away from you and your duck. Nobody makes a duck like Donna Donna, and that'll be in a recipe uh, when this book comes out. Donna will be talking briefly, briefly about that again because the focus is not on the uh, on kitchen cutlery and all that. But I just want to show you that that can do that. That can take. This can take. The backbone out of a bird. Now, we're not going to be. If I was at a campground or some, that that would be a different thing. But of course, I'm not going to be uh, taking out the back uh, backbone of a bird generally with this in the kitchen. Again, campground camping. This is a very versatile tool. So what I do use, of course, well, maybe not of course until I explain it here, is a pair of uh, kitchen scissors. And believe me, I'm going to be very honest with you here. When you're trying to take out the backbone of a uh, six-pound bird or a 20-pound turtle, let's just stick with the six-pound bird for a moment. This, you know how the skin, skin is very slippery, and you will be doing this. Maybe you'll be using two hands to get up once, and a lot of strength to get up one side, alongside the backbone of the bird, and then the other side. Of course, to make life a little bit easier, uh, not a pair, but a good pair of poultry shears is the magic. So this will be uh, exerting a lot less effort. You will, you still may have to use that, but it'll be considerably, consider, uh, considerably um, easier. And you can see this one. This is uh, talking about uh, getting maybe confused with it. This is OXO. Uh, some of you are familiar Oxo. with this brand. How do you pronounce it? OXO. OXO? Oxo. Um, very, very good kitchen scissors and very, very good poultry shears. Okay, but now if you do some Googling and check this out and or the seismic, you'll see in promotional videos, if you will, um, that they baton they baton wood, they baton limbs, they baton uh, small logs. And what batoning is, for those of you who don't know here, is to take, let's say that this is a log, and this is about the diameter of some of the logs that I've seen cut. Where I'm not going to do it with my 
beautiful knife here, but you could do it. But uh, again, I've done this with six pound point uh, three oh something chickens. So what you would do is uh, for firewood, you're out in the woods, you need uh, some kindling or you need to chop up some logs, uh, small logs. So you bury this as far as you can, the edge of the blade into the wood, and then you take a, a heavy limb or a block of wood and you start pounding pounding this down into the wood all the way down, all the way through until it splits. And you couldn't do that with some of the smaller knives here that I showed out, showed you, but you can do it with the seismic and you can do it with this bad boy. The XOC. Because, with the XOC, because of its Dead bolt locking system. Now watch when I turn these over. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. The deadlock bolt system. Okay, and what it is, there are two pins in here. One on each side. One on each side. And they, they lock this blade in place. And the only way this knife is going to fail is if those pins are broken. Now, I have seen videos where they have driven this into um, a wood slab and people have pulled down on it or hung from it and the blade would not break. The blade would not be separated. The pins, or I should say bolts, on each side uh, are solid and they're not going anyway, anywhere. It's, almost, it's virtually impossible to have this knife fail putting it through the abuse that I just mentioned. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Okay, we're getting into the nitty-gritty uh, nitty here. Again, I just want to point out, because I have it written down in my notes, the exos, the magic of the XOC's strength is its Herculean deadbolt locking system. That is the magic. Now, hold on, hold on to your hat. <laughs> Normally, well, no, we covered that business. Um, the implement is a workhorse whether you are camping in the forest, busy at home in the kitchen, hunting game for a field, or on the water battling behemoths, behemoths. like behemoths like striped bass, readying the catch for a seafood feast. You ready? At a sticker shock price of don't run away, don't turn don't turn us out, don't tune us out. <laughs> at a sticker shock price Maybe that's why they called it shock, shock too. Maybe, yeah. um, it's seven hundred and fifty smackers, seven hundred and fifty dollars. You may tell me that I'm all wet. If that be the case, consider its younger sibling, the seismic, who will do practically the job of this. Practically the job of this, in terms of. Uh, cutting up those chickens, uh, spatchcocking chickens, taking out the backbone. And it'll handle batoning, it'll batoning. Batoning. Yeah. Batoning. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a strong knife, too. Yeah. Considerably strong. It's amazingly strong. Okay, so $750 versus $100 on average. Big difference. But what you're getting... Again, we're going to be going over this in, uh, very, very, uh, in very uh, much uh, 
detail. Sure. Yeah. Um, just give me a second here. Okay, we're going to show them here. At that price, again, this is a prototype. They did a run of um, a limited, 200 run limited edition. So if you will show them this, Donna. I'm going to put this down here. See if you can home in on this. This is number 200 of 200. It's so ostensibly, it seems like, oh, so that's it. That's the run. Well, are they going to uh, mass produce these, uh, or, or is this the end of the road here? So I'm going to um, quote someone for a moment. Um, I spoke to the marketing director, and he says, quote, there are still some units available for purchase. And I say to you, whether you have deep pockets or not, if you want to make an investment and you're into the outdoorsy business, again, get away from the kitchen. We're not going to be dispatching chickens normally, you know, with uh, this knife or batoning and putting, you know, uh, a knife like this through its bases, you'd be using poultry shears. But get into my head, you have to see what my intentions are with the knife. As camping, fishing, hunting, and gourmet cooking are but four of my five favorite pastimes, writing about these subjects, the sixth, is my ultimate joy. The paradox being that writing well is the essence of hard work. How would hard work ever be a joy, you might ask? The answer to that question was explained via a quote attributed to Dorothy Parker. I'm a writer, so i got to throw out a couple of uh, interesting points here. Dorothy Parker, well-known writer for her um, wit and wise cracks satirically stated, I hate to write. I hate to write, but love having written. Actually, the quote is, I hate to write, but I love having written. Well, that's what I said. As an aside, Donna mentioned, touched on this earlier. Um, Donna and I have a unique gourmet cookbook coming out sometime this month or early April. It's titled On Your Way to Cooking Gourmet with 48 remarkable recipes presented with the beginner in mind. Look for it on Amazon again this month or very early uh, first week let's say in April should be out on Amazon. And yes, the book will cover the specifics of spatchcocking chickens and turkeys, and I have a smiley face here. Again, this will more than suffice for the kitchen. But get away from your scissors unless they're decent, decent scissors. While you're on the topic of your, uh, or our cookbook, I should say, uh, it includes low-cost equipment, savvy and savory tips, a lot of color photos that instruct, time-saving techniques, and it includes relevant excerpts from Bob's award-winning fiction because we do, he does put in a uh, love of food and cooking into his writing as well. So Now, when you said low-cost equipment, we're not pushing anything like a $750 oh God, no. dollar <laughs> knife. As a matter of fact, I mentioned a roasting pan that can accommodate a spatched cock chicken or 20 pound per, uh, turkey. Imagine this thing splayed open like this. Well, you can go out, uh, you can Google, you can shop around and uh, try and find a pan. Uh, try to find a roasting pan that will accommodate a bird like that, especially now you want to put it in a roasting pan that has an elevated rack so that the heat will, you know, surround, come around and uh, help cook this bird. 
Okay, so we're not talking about, you know, high-priced, high-ticket items. We're talking, well, uh, I'll be mentioning in the book, a rack that'll cost you, an elevated rack, two-position elevated rack that'll run you $40. We'll talk about, do you remember the price of poultry shears like this? Or was I think it? they were $25. $25. Yeah, and, do you remember the and price? And the, the scissors, the OXO scissors, I think were about $15. Okay, not so ex, not expensive. it's uh, time-saving equipment, inexpensive equipment. It'll save you such aggravation, okay? This book... Um, I put it together over a year, but this is really like 55, 60 years in the making. Uh, we wrote this book together. This is the first time Donna got involved with uh, uh, a book with her name on it. Some of these recipes are done, but I've been at this for many, many years, and if we add my time involved and Donna's time involved, total that, we're, we're talking <laughs> astronomical, almost maybe a hundred years. And, and amazingly, uh, our hunter friends are fabulous cooks. So they're into cooking. So if they, if you're, if you're a hunter and you're into cooking, um, you know, it might, it might interest mm, you. But anyway, back point. to the CRKT XOC. Okay. Shock. Give them some details about this guy. So. Rather be considered an EDC, an everyday carry knife, this XOC bad boy by designer Flavio Ikuma, this is the designer, Flavio Ikuma of Presidente Prudent, Presidente Prudente Brazil. Brazil. That's mm -hmm. where he hails from. Should be, pun intended, weighed in. 11 ounces should be weighed in as an EWC, says Bob Banfelder. Everywhere carry. An everywhere carry companion for camping, for home, a field, far afield, sea and shore. Now, let's start looking at this knife in detail. Okay. And maybe I'll leave this here for the comparison, but maybe it'll take away from it. Okay, we're going to look at the specs, okay? The blade length, the blade length. Company, these are from the company now, written down, and we're just going to check some of these out, which, which I really haven't done. Uh, 4.2 inches. Okay, there's the blade length from here. There's the point. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is in a way here. Okay, 4.2, you four. could see, yeah, yeah, a little over 4. Okay. Um, the blade steel is... C-T-S-X-H-P. For those of you who are not familiar with that, it is stainless steel comprised of carbon and chromium, which translates into high-quality blade hardness and corrosion resistance. The blade finish is satin, a satin finish, highly polished. The blade thickness, company says, is 0.18 inches. Uh, the overall length of the uh, knife is, company says, where's my ruler? Now I'm getting right here. here. Overall length. Overall length, they say is 10.38. So here's our 10. Yeah. Oh, just okay, a little pro over 10. Approaching. Yeah, approaching to 10, 10, 10. Yeah. 10.38. The closed length. Okay. And again, watch how this closes. is displayed. I push on the pivot button and 
with the weight of this blade, it closes effortlessly. Your fingers are out of the way for safe deployment. Okay? As opposed to mm, something like this, there's no button here or anything. I have to, uh, let's see, take this and I have to close it like this. See, it's a little more, you know, perilous. <laughs> Got to be very, very you have careful. Have to be careful. Okay. Okay. Let's get. Let's want see the, what the company says on this to get the length. The length on this, we have to tell. Uh, the closed length. Closed okay. length. Yeah. Six and a quarter. Six point two five. So let's see. There's your six yeah. on, right on the money actually. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. on the money. And the weight? The weight. So let's turn this on. We have to set this to ounces. Let's see. Okay. And there we go. We got pounds and that'll go to it'll tell us in ounces. No, it won't. Yeah, it will. Pound ounces, right there. Trust me. Ounces, now, there you go. But now if you went out to the pound where it says pound ounces, it does that. Too. Oh, it does it also? Yeah, oh. It does it all. Oh, I learned something. Okay. 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 11.8. Oh, 08. Uh, oh, and they're saying 11 ounces. Okay, so I've yeah, got 11. Point oh eight. So let's... Let's, let me try something here. Let's go back to this pound. I want to see if it reads the same. You have to do it over here. Ounces, millimeters, milliliters, grams, grains. Let's see if I'm right here for changes. It's hard, it's hard, to, it's yeah. hard to fathom. 11.1. 11. 11. Yeah, okay. so it kind of, kind of does it that way. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I said to go up to. For some reason, it's more accurate. Okay. With with the ounces, yeah. Okay. So that's that's a pretty heavy knife. It's a heavy knife, but again, um, it's just unbelievable carry. It's not heavy like you would imagine carrying it in the pocket. Okay, so... The handle, the handle of the knife, okay, is a woven carbon fiber. And the handle's inlay, for those of you who are familiar with these uh, terms and numbers here, it's 6A14VTI for titanium, which translates to machined titanium and I don't know how if I have this in my notes but I just want to explain that this inlay is just that it is inlaid in this carbon fiber there are no sharp edges and here's an interesting getting back to that 200 run um, there if you Google and look at some of the videos on this knife, which has been out about a year now in that uh, prototype uh, arena. Remember 200 run? I have 200 of 200. Early on, there were some complaints where the handle um, going into the inlay, uh, the inlay wasn't really, it was, it was raised and you could feel, okay, it was complaint. And um, one of the fellows who complained went back to, well, shouldn't have that for a $750 knife. <laughs> and, and he's right. But guess what? Oh, and I have to back up to another thing. These stops, okay? These stops here, thumb stops, um, when I guess they deployed, they broke, okay? Early on, like number between let's say one and 30. Um, so what the company did, uh, and well they should, they took all those knives back, went back to the drawing board, they fixed them, went back to the drawing board. When we reached 
200. Uh, we probably, you know, they probably uh, nipped it in the bud. Uh, I'm just guess, guesstimating now. Let's say maybe after 40 or something like that. There is just, it's flush. The inlay is in here. It's flush. There are no sharp edges. It's just uh, beautifully, uh, they beautifully put, the knife. beautifully they really put did a together. Nice job. Okay, so now let's see. I explored the knife style, they call it a folding knife with the deadlock bolt system um, mechanism, which is uh, translates into superior strength. And we, we covered that with the bolts going through here. Okay, there is what they call a detent screw. Okay, and I'll point that out here. Okay, this is the detent screw located above the port side, port side of this, by the left side, let's say, of um, a horizontal grip groove here. This is a grip groove here for adjusted uh, tension, adjusted tension. It's control setting ranging from effortless deployment to a more demanding opening flip. So I can control this. I can make this um, tighten this up so maybe when I do this it will only come up to here and then I would have to use the wrist action or look at this you can set it low where uh, here I'm using wrist action and I'll show you that I don't even have to do that okay oops caught, <laughs> caught in a line okay just uh, just amazing well actually I could back off on this, uh, going counterclockwise, and make screw. this the detent mm -hmm. screw, and I can make this, you know, uh, even easier to open. Okay. Now I haven't gotten into really cleaning or lubricating this knife, and this was after uh, sc uh, spatchcocking a uh, bird and stuff like that. So, you know, if I had this well lubricated too, it would probably be even better. But this is no... Uh, no, no effortless. Yeah. Effortless. And we talked about, I showed you the uh, logo here, that little design. Um, Within the handle lies the IKBS, and that stands for Ikuma. That's the Flavio Ikuma. That's the surname, mm -hmm. guy's surname, the designer. The Ikuma Korth, K O R T H, bearing system. That's what IKBS stands mm -hmm. for Ikuma Korth bearing system. Um, um, the pivot design magic. Is uh, for smooth and effortless deployment. We'll notice a brass collar going around the pivot button. That's a nice touch, aesthetically pleasing. We have the brass clip, pocket clip, and this for the lanyard. So when I'm on the boat, when we get another boat again, okay, and let's say I'm uh, gutting some fish or, uh, you know, filleting some fish, I could even do it with that cleaning, cutting up some fish. Of course, I'm going to have some security. The lanyard going through here, and it's going to be on my wrist mm -hmm. because I do not want to drop. Uh, not, not lose this in the water, huh? You can safely close the blade with one hand by pushing the pivot release button, fingers safely out of harm's way, I just did that, the weight of the blade doing the work for you, or by pushing the button, let's do this, or by pushing the button with one hand and closing the blade with the other. So I'm pushing the button, closing it. So I can do it that way. I can open it this way, or I can open it this way by grabbing this cutout here mm -hmm. and pulling this. Um, I think I mentioned these grooves that I was talking about. Um, this knife is so well, uh, it, it is, uh, 
what Ergon, did they say? Ergonomically designed. designed. Mm -hmm. Ergonomically designed. It truly, truly is. The way this fits in my hand, and I'm not a big guy, it's a big knife, but not a big guy, not a big hand here. It is just like so comfortable, right? Uh, then for, you know, like a reverse, it just, it just fits in here beautifully. I won't even get into uh, protection, right? Oh, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, this is worth repeating. I covered it, but the dead bolt locking system employs two bolts interlocking the base of the blade between the liners. When we talk about the liners, this is the this is the handle, of course, and this is the liner in here. So. The dead bolt locking system employs two bolts through here in uh, interlocking the base of the blade between the liners for a rock solid retention. You can view this in an exploded schematic on the company's website and Donna will put a link on there www.crkt.com. Mm -hmm. You'll put that up on the screen, right? I'll put it in the description. It'll be there. Um, for the knife to fail, <clears throat> what did I say? The bolts would have to break. Break, which they don't. <laughs> Pointing out some attention to detail. Now getting into this a little more deeply here. Uh, chamfering is an interesting word. C-H-A-M-F-E-R-I-N-G. You guys who know knives, you know this. Um, a smooth transition between the titanium inlay and the carbon fiber, uh, fiber handle, no sharp edges. We, we talked about that. Jimping, J-I-M-P-I-N-G. Um, that is a, a cutout, a cutout notches, if you will. And let's look at the um, front flipper, okay? Here's some jimping here. You can see that this is cut out, cut out notches. So let that me, the let finger... A, let me get a better... Okay. So that your finger doesn't slide. So that your finger doesn't slide mm -hmm. off there. Okay, so we have some uh, uh, jimping here, jimping here, but let me go through what I wrote so I don't miss a trick here. Uh, you have it at the front flipper. Ah, now watch this. See, so here's the front flipper. And uh, this is going to transition to a point behind the choil. You were asking me earlier what's C-H-O-I-L. So we can see this notch, this cut out here. You can see the uh, jimping here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the notch is cut in here. That's, this was what you saw a moment ago, see? It's up here, mm -hmm. now it's down here. And what does this choil do? It protects you, it's a, it's a stop, if you will. So as I was spatchcocking those birds, coming down here, my finger is not gonna slide off and, you know, wind up, uh, you know, into the blade. Okay, we have some more, uh, we have the jimping along the top section just give me a second here jumping along the top rear spine section of the blade okay here's the spine the rear spine section blade and along the bottom rear section of the handle mm -hmm. got that were you able to show the other? Yeah. Okay, and we talked about the ergonomics. To say that the knife is ergonomically designed is an understatement. It is really, really beautiful. I wish you could feel this in your hand, male or female, really small hand, big it just this accommodates your hand. Unless you had a catcher's mitt for a hand, <laughs> okay, which would kind of override that, you're in good shape.
the clip, the pocket clip, is two and three quarter inches long. The brass pocket clip. And let's just see, when I say two and three quarter, so here, right on the money, mm -hmm. two and three quarter clip. You have three brass liner lock separators, okay, which is a nice accent against the uh, pocket clip here. You have these brass dividers. You have a decorative plate thumb stop studs, okay. And that's these guys that I was uh, mentioning. Maybe I'll lay this down or I'll hold this like this, Donna, so that you so can... So what am I focusing in on here? On the stops. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, why stops? See? They stop. They stop this boy. And these are your stops. Okay. They have an inch long cutout in front of the blade thumb stop studs for opposing hand deployment. Okay. Where is that? That is. Where did it go? Where did it go? <laughs> Over here. Right there. Okay. Yeah. So again, I can deploy the blade or I could deploy the blade. If I grab it here, I really can't pull it out. It's here. Mm -hmm. And this is cut out so your hand does not slide off of here. You, this grips, okay? Mm -hmm. You can pull that out very easily. Okay, now we're going to get into how this thing is, uh, how the handle is really put together. So, we'll talk about these things. Okay, these are Torx uh, screwdriver, the T-O-R-X screw, uh, screwdrivers, if you will. And all you need for most of your pocket knives are in sizes 5 to 8, 6 to 9, 7 to 10. Okay, and virtually all of these screws take a six. Now, wait a minute. I have the wrong end. See how I set this up? I put these on here because it was kind of hard to read the inscription here. Mm -hmm. So what I did was T6 means that this is the six and this is the nine. So now, fits in here perfectly mm -hmm. okay now some of you saying oh that's silly I got these uh, t uh, torque wrench set with these uh, drivers if you will so it's like holding the handle of a screwdriver and you can ply you know a torque but there's a danger there if you're a beginner fussing around with these because you can apply too much torque and you know strip the uh, threads of the screw so you don't want to do that these are fine for what I have to do and for this knife all I need is a six to take out these screws on both sides except for one which we'll get to in a moment so on the left side okay this is the left side I have six Torque screws. One, two, three, four. Oh, making a liar out of me. So I got the wrong side. Okay. Um, on the left side of handle. Give me. Okay. I have eight. Mm -hmm. I'm reading this wrong. I'm reading the six here. I have eight T6 Torque screws on the left side of the handle, including the uh, detent screw mm -hmm. okay but that doesn't mean see I didn't really write this well because the detent screw is a different size which I'll explain down here but let's see if 
we got this finally right here, if I got this finally right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, this hole that you see here is not a missing screw. Some people, when you go say, oh, I got a missing screw, or I had a missing screw when the knife came in, what you would do for you south paws, I'm carrying this on the right side, okay? You can remove this screw, take your clip off, and you'll see the little groove. Maybe the camera will pick that up. It locks into this, and you put the screw within, and uh, now you're set up for mm -hmm. uh, left side uh, carry. Okay. Now, one T8 torque screw on the left side for the pivot button. So this is our detent here. So I need an 8 now. Donna, let's see. Now let's see if we got an 8 here. That's 7 to 10. Okay, 5 to 8. So Okay, we ran out of memory on the card and we're back here again and just as well because I misspoke I have to back up to uh, the T6. The T6 is good for everything on the side. On the left side? T6 on the left side mm -hmm. as well as the detent. See how that's locked in there? Yes. As well as the detent screw. Okay. Now, I believe that the CRKT does sell though, these Torx. Uh, they do. They do. And here you can home in on this. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't remember Good what it have. costs, but it's it's nominal. Yeah. But if you have those drivers, well, if you have the drivers for the Torx and you're into the knives, you probably know what you're doing and you're not going to use excessive force on the screws. But I just like this because I can't uh, over, you know, I could, I'm just not going to exert force, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, torque, uh, because you will strip screws like that. You can see how dainty they are. Um, so now, this here, there's one T8 torque screw on the left side for the pivot button. So here's our pivot button. And now, instead of a 6, we need an 8. And is it, is it right in the center of the yep, circle? Yep, it's right here. Let's see if it it's fits tiny. in. tiny. Tiny. Okay. That's it. See? Yes. Okay. And now, on the right side, we have eight T6 uh, torque screws on the right side of the handle, including the pocket clip screw. So let's see if we've got this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are got that right. So for a with a six, uh, with a T6 and a T8, you're good for this whole mm -hmm. knife, mm -hmm. and most other pocket knives uh, from CRKT. Um, and yes, again, some people. Oh, there were sites and uh, a company that was handling these the knives and uh, said, "Oh no, it's not ambidextrous." No. I proved it to myself by actually taking it off and putting it on the other side, and that's what some people, oh, missing screw, that's not a missing screw, that's where you would put the, uh, the clip, okay? Uh, and I'll just repeat this again, and yes, the pocket clip is ambidextrous for you southpaws out there. Go for this serious knife now, because I don't know how many really are left, whether or not you have bottomless pockets, ha, huh, pun intended, smiley face, um, you'll thank me in the short run. Now we're going to talk briefly about care and maintenance of pocket knives and knives in general. Whether it's a $750 knife or, uh, I don't know, under a $100 knife, 
when it comes time to clean and or disassemble pocket knives, it be wise for you to have on hand the following tools and basic materials so as to keep your knives in pristine condition. Considering the above-mentioned $750 XOC price or the $100 Seismic model price, you want ultimate protection. So here's a short list, and then we're done, so don't go away. It's a short list, I promise. <laughs> Well, it's a short list, and then maybe if uh, we have time, yeah, I think we're going to do, we're going to show them a sharp, the Primo a, a sharpening system is extraordinaire. So very quickly, what you would need in terms of uh, tools and materials is a Torx, we went through these, a slotted, a Phillips, and hex tool kit. So here are my Torx, and I'm into guns, so I have my Smith & Wesson kit, which has all my uh, slotted, the Phillips head, socket, all, all kinds of things. Um, you don't have to go out and buy this set. You buy for what you need, as long as you can, uh, you know, cover your Torx, your slotted, your Phillips, and hex tool set, you're there. Um, when you take a screw out like this, or take the screws out and for cleaning you put them back what you do is you would take a spot of um, Loctite and the Loctite that you want is called 242 it's a blue color not the red okay you're not permanently putting these screws in because you're going to be cleaning these disassembling, disassembling and cleaning periodically okay um, microfiber I use these for the car microfiber cleaning cloths multi-purpose for auto and home use 12 by 12 and I can, I'm always cleaning these up putting these away these are not gonna rust in stainless steel but I just like to you know keep these nice and clean okay um, again because I'm into guns I have cleaning patches for my guns and that's what I use. I found them to be very good. If you use another kind of a cloth or a paper towel, all those fibers are going to, uh, you know, some of those fibers are going to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, come off. And these, these are what you want. You put your oils on here and we'll talk about that in a second, okay? Um, a good cleaning agent is your iso. How do I pronounce this? Isopropyl gonna, al alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol. And um, we've learned recently is that you want ninety-one percent. There's seventy percent. There's ninety percent, and uh, that's what you would go for. You go to your, you know, supermarket pharmacy. It's very inexpensive. Now we get into nano oil or oils uh, for lubrication. You can drive yourself crazy. You can spend a fortune for these oils. And they'll tell you, you need A, B, C, and D, E, F, G, H. You don't, okay? What I'm going to, the list, I told you the list is short, really. The oils that I'm going to mention, I think there, I have four here, and you're covered. You want. Nano, N-A-N-O. It's, it's one of your better oils, okay? You'll find cheaper oils, but it's not just worth the savings. Um, nano CLP 5 weight for penetration. When you want to get into for the oil to penetrate for lubrication, you want the 5 weight. It's not as viscous. It's almost uh, like liquid. It's almost like water, if you will. Um, the common one, the one that you'll be using most generally, is a nano weight, uh, a nano 10 weight oil for general lubrication. Then there's a nano oil 85 weight for your IKBS bearings. Best oil for that. For your bearings and knives with washers. Some have washers, some have bearings. Um, K2 
KPL Knife Privet Knife Pivot Lube Oil Original 17 weight. When I say original, when you see the KPL Knife Pivot Lube Oil Original, they have uh, next to it uh, an 85 weight oil. You don't need that if you got the Nano Oil 85 weight, so you don't repeat that. Um, and then lastly on the list, <clears throat> before we get into sharpening quality knives, a frog lube. It's called Frog Lube Britain Together, F-R-O-G-L-U-B-E, C-L-P. It's safe for food. So if you are using this in the kitchen like or in a campground for the uh, uh, spatchcocking of chickens and turkey, whatever, um, I suggest you get the spray bottle. They have a spray and a paste, but you get the... Um, the spray bottle, it is food safe and it's great for both lubrication and corrosion protection. And for those who know about the best knife sharp, I told you I'm going to give you two statements that are going to be kind of uh, blow away. <clears throat> uh, for the best knife sharpening system in the world, if you want to stay tuned for that, we're going to, I'm going to move on this in a moment here. If some of you know um, <clears throat> the um, Wicked Edge knife sharpening system, you can tune out. But if you want to see the best that they have going, and more importantly, the reason why you need this system for sharpening quality knives. You're going to spend a hundred or... $700 for a knife, somewhere in between there. Let's say 200 kitchen cutlery, 200 on average to something like that. You want a quality knife sharpening system. And if you're of this mindset, oh no, I got a honing stone and I know how to do that. I have the wet stones or I have that home kitchen thing where I pull the knife through. Forget about it you're going to wind up in trouble. You're going to probably ruin the knife blade. So I'm going to get the system over here and we'll go through that. Just give me a second. If you notice, well, here's the blade with the serrations, but oh, I've taken it long, I've got to put away. If you'll notice, generally speaking, the blade comes around and there's no dip here. But <clears throat> when I'm scotch, uh, <laughs> scotch cocking chickens or, you know, turkeys or something, the way this thing kind of is indented, it just cuts and glides. Uh, right up to the choil, uh, if you will, in, in front of the um, flipper here. Uh, it's safe. Your hands are out of the way. But how do you sharpen a baby like this, unless, a bad boy like this, if, unless you're really into honing with the wet stones and all that? This can be a little bit tricky, okay? Um, so it is an anomaly, this dip here this gradually this gradual sweep but if you have a system like this you're going good to go and this is the wicked edge a um, we130 with diamond uh, donna, stones say donna knows donna knows all this stuff here okay there's another one with serrated let's take this one this was uh well it is my for, for, for a very a very small knife this thing is like unbelievable, but you can see that the um, blade, the beveled edge is uh, continuous here. There's no dip or anything like that, but if you're going to get into a knife like that, how do you sharpen this, okay? You would have no problem. You would have no problem locking this blade in and sharpening it, okay? 
and rather get into the whole thing because I we did a video on this Donna give you you I'll give them the link the to that yes. so if <clears throat> if you want to you know either do that in your leisure for the full view I'm just going to give you a, a quick overview here of this remarkable this remarkable uh, sharpening system Having sharpened scores of knives over a period of years, I learned the hard way that quality knives must, not should, must be sharpened with a manually operated, angle guided, manually operated, angle guided knife sharpening system for precision performance and I truly mean that forget about those electric knife sharpeners handheld pull-through sharpeners whetstones and steels steels called the rods in other words you would be wise to select the finest knife sharpening system in the world there's my other bold brazen statement but it is I realize the statement sounds like an extreme example of hyperbole. However, every word is true. Endorsed by industry professionals around the world. The Wicked Edge E WE130 -E model is a winner. Prices range from $575 to $1,250. Oh, I'm spending your money, $750 there. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but I'm telling you, I suggest the Wicked Edge WE130 Pro Pack 3. You'll get what you see here, less these. You can always add on to this. I'll explain that in a moment. Um, it's the WE-130 Pro Pack 3 employing diamond grit honing stones. And I would go with the three pack. You get what you see here and maybe a little bit more depending uh, for $9.99. So between the $5.75 and the $12.50, I would go with the $9.99 and get, get it and be done with it. Unless you have been sharp, hand sharpening knives for years, diligently maintaining a specific angle for a particular knife in hand, chances are you are not going to sustain the angle and the rhythm, rhythm necessary to sharpen any blade with keen precision. Okay, so in other words, I have a honing. So let's pretend that this, uh, that this is a whetstone, okay? And I want to maintain this angle and then do it on this side. You, can you be that precise? You're going to hold this at, say, this knife has to be sharpened at 22 degrees. Are you going to be, are you that much of a professional that you're going to be consistently holding it at the right angle and maintaining that rhythm? Come on. So here, They'll walk away. So here is They'll your angle away. Isn't... I want to expose, one second. They'll walk away with sharp knives. You will walk away with scary sharp <laughs> knives. I'm sorry. Donna. And these are the these are the angles that you would. These are the angles. This control. See, I have this set, 20, 21, 22. But suppose I'm going to a fillet knife, a much much thinner blade, and it calls for 15 degrees. I simply Move put that here. The guide. Okay. And I'm going to put this back at 22. Uh, because generally speaking, most of your kitchen cult cutlery, like a, let's take that 8 inch chef's knife, okay? 22 degrees is a good point. Mm. But let's say you really don't know what the bevel is. I've had companies tell me, oh, no, you sharpen this. Uh, uh, Henkel's knife that we're talking about at uh, blah 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 degrees and then you put it in let's say you 
you put it in at that degree and you find out that now you've uh, well temporarily ruined a bevel because what they told you and what it's really what you're really seeing there are two, are two different things so the smartest way to do it is to take a magic marker and color this out okay mm -hmm. color this and then they're coloring the bevel covering the bevel so the edge uh, uh, of this right yeah. and if this doesn't take that black mark off you know you're not at the right angle that this is set for mm -hmm. okay so that's the magic that's the best way to do it so this knife is sharp and uh, I'm not going to fool around and sharpen this but um, this is the magic I get this out of here I need that in here this is what you'll be doing and there's a little bit of a learning curve, nothing difficult. You just take your time and you go through. If the knife is in really bad condition, you may want to start with a hundred. No knife of mine has been that bad. Maybe I don't even go with the 200. Um, I go with the, the 400. I go to the uh, 800 and 1,000. And then for something like this, when I get through with this knife, even after having a spatchcock, a couple of birds, I would simply, and got to be careful, in the beginning I be would careful. say, wear those special gloves because you could get hurt. I have 1,500 grit here. 1,500 grit here. All I would do would be touch this up and when you start getting into like 1500 grit and this uh, fine lapping film what you're doing is putting on that beautiful mirror finish on the edge and can get that done it can the light uh, you can you Let's know see. show them the distinction between the bevel and the blade there yeah hopefully they can see that yeah, take that guy out of there. <laughs> now, this, you could see that this is a pretty thick spine. Now, I forgot what the dimension is, but if you have a wider one that goes, uh, that you want to sharpen, a wider spine than this, it won't accommodate it but they have uh, a low angle adapter. I just put this in as a whole, uh, just, uh, I don't want to confuse the people. Uh, you put on a low angle adapter and you can put in a very, very thick spine blade and uh, you're covered, you're covered mm -hmm. for virtually for anything, you know, except maybe an ax. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> so, uh, we're finishing up. Promise it's a long one, but uh, okay, we're doing that. With the Wicked Edge knife sharpening system, you are going to produce a scary sharp edge on virtually any knife in your arsenal. You'll be amazed. And that kind of wraps it up. Don, is there anything you see that no, I failed just to give, address? Uh, give the people the, the website information for these products uh, in the description. And um, Okay, is that all you want to say, Mr. Banfield? Well, I'll sh show them. See now, this I'm going to put at a higher setting. I just want them to see. And I'm doing this quickly. What you do is you measure uh, your blade make a little mark with a pencil halfway. and halfway and let's say let's pretend that this is halfway okay you go to town okay mm -hmm. very very simple okay okay that's right. it folks well thanks for hanging in there this one was a long one so i have my work cut it's out it's the for longest me. one we've ever done but i think that this xoc deserves the attention it does it does the crkt xoc is quite an awesome uh folding knife uh and the if you 
don't want to spend the $750, you should really check out their other knives, which are really, really wonderful. The Seismic, the Avant, the Home Front, they're all, they're all wonderful, wonderful knives. So until next time, we're going to say goodbye. And uh, we hope you stay safe and that you are well. And uh, thanks for watching.